Hey guys, so um, I am here to do another stream real quick. Um, today we're going to be going through and making a Space Invaders clone. So real quick forewarning, um, I am in a brand new place. I'm not sure what the noise levels are like. So feel free to post in the chat if like the um, if there's a lot of noise or something in the background. This is a brand new room for me, so I'm getting used to everything. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, real quick, uh, I know that this stream is a bit earlier than anticipated. Um, originally, the stream was going to start tomorrow. The reason that it's starting today, however, is that I just moved into a new place, as you can see. Um, and I am unfortunately going to be moving more tomorrow, some of the heavier things, at the time I would normally do this stream. So. Um, today, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do this. If you're not here and you're watching this on YouTube later, I apologize. Um, I wish there was a way Twitch would let me send out messages to all my followers, but unfortunately not. So, um, today what I want to go through is I want to go through a few quick things before we actually start getting into this. Um, one of the big things that somebody had brought up previously was pointers versus references. And, um, well, I've understood the basic concepts behind them. Um, I haven't really looked into like the hard differences between the two. And so I did a little bit of research so I can actually go through and um, tell you guys what exactly the differences between pointers and references are. So let's kind of go into that real quick. Um, pointers and references. The best ways that I've seen um, referenced online to describe them is that they're relatively the same thing. Um, there's not a whole lot of differences between them other than a few main points. Um, references you cannot reassign. When you set a reference, um, it's automatically going to stay that way. It's basically a constant pointer. So you can't change where it's pointing to, quote unquote, later on. It's physically referencing that object. Um, so that's kind of the first downside is so you know, with our game state, we made those pointers. We don't want those to be references because the game state's going to change. We don't want it to change between. Uh, we don't want it to be. We don't want it to be the same state every time. So you have to make it a pointer so we can change it. Um, the other thing with references versus pointers is that um, references are generally kind of unclear at times. You know, when you set a reference, you're generally doing. Let's go ahead and bring up Notepad. Um, what it generally looks like is it looks like, you know, if you're setting, uh, if you're editing a variable, it's going to look like, I don't know, state dot um, player is equal to new player. All right, you don't know what state is. You don't know if it's a reference, if it's um, a new state that you're setting up beforehand. I mean, it, it could be a variety of different types of states where if we have to do state dot player equal new player or we have to do you know state player is equal to new player it's pretty obvious that then state is a pointer whereas up here it's not so obvious um, and that's kind of been the big thing I've seen I know Google's uh, coding style standards ref recommend using pointers sometimes for clarity um, and I think that's what we're going to continue to do with this project I'm happy with um, how clear everything's looking so far so that's kind of what it is going to be for now. So um, that's kind of the big pointers versus references. Really, there's not a whole lot of differences from what I've been researching. Um, generally, the way that it works is that a um, when it comes down to compile time, they're pretty much handled the same way. You know, it's it's all going to be the same amount of speed wise. Um, the big thing is again that whole idea that references are constant and pointers can be uh, changed around last minute if need be. So uh, as you can probably guess from the title of today's project, we are going to be going through and making a Space Invaders clone. Um, now for those who were here last week, you saw us go through and make um, a lot of our uh, base project stuff. Um, today we are not going to be going through and remaking that. This is going to be kind of a continuation off of Pong from before. Um, this time around though what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to make some more advanced things to use. Um, the big things we're going to be focusing today are on entities um, and making a simple entity manager um, and how we can utilize that to get different types of enemies and stuff in our Space Invaders clone. 
Um, so let's go ahead and start off by creating the GitHub project. So I'm going to come over to here. I'm going to come to repositories. I'm going to click to create a new one. And actually, I'm just going to go through and do that on the GitHub visual editor. So come over here, add, create, and we are going to come here and do create, and we're going to name, the, name this invaded. And that's going to be um, created right in there, Visual Studio, cool. So we'll create that repository, and we're going to publish it. Okay, space. go ahead and do that and publish invaded and I'll go ahead and I will add that down below into the previous uh, streams so you'll be able to go down there and see this and of course this will all be on YouTube afterwards um, so feel free to watch it on there if you decide to And the YouTube link will be up soon as well. As soon as the stream is done, I will start the publishing process. That does take a little bit longer, so please bear with me there. But you can go down um, to the bottom of this stream and get the um, link to the GitHub. So let's go ahead now and create a new project. And we're going to call this Invaded. Um, it's going to be a C++ project. So what we are going to do real quick is we're going to go through um, and add in all of the SFML stuff. So we will come over to here, ping, we'll bring this up, and we will go here, and go to debated, okay, so we need our third party libs. We need to come into here and we need to sort by type, get our DLLs. Place those there. And then the other things we'll want is we are going to want to copy uh, main game, main menu. We're going to want to copy entity, game state, main game H, main game menu H, and We'll copy main as well. And we're also going to copy the graphics and sounds. We're going to reuse some of those um, just to kind of save us some time for now. Um, and I think that should be all we need. So now we're going to come over to here. Properties. So if you've watched the previous stream, you should know all of what's going on. Um, it's pretty straightforward again. Um, nothing too surprising, I would hope. And I'm just going to actually real quick open up the old uh, project over here. And we're just going to kind of copy and paste all the libraries that were needed just to save us some time. So. come here and oops, do show all files. We're going to include entity, game state, main, basically all of the stuff from there. 
right click include in project and so there's all of that we can close a lot of this so there's all of that and then we're going to go through and add in our filters again so we're going to add our states filter which can just go in there and then we're going to add in the core filter which has entity and game state and then our state filter again here which will contain main game and main menu and the final thing that we're going to want is I believe we need to get our font ping or no that's already in there in the graphics queue so let's go through now and it should actually uh, run for the most part except for the main game which makes sense so we'll go through and remove all of those remove all of those Here to main game. We want to get rid of that. Get rid of that. And actually, we are going to also copy over the score in this case. So get rid of that. Space Invaders, so we can remove one of those and rename that. There's that. There's we'll go ahead and remove. And there's that. And so there's the previous game that we had created. Um, so we can go through and we can still play this. Um, it all works like we had before. So that's all situated. So now what we want to go do through and do is we want to start getting um, all of our stuff ready for the entity side of things. So if you remember from last time, we already have a simple entity uh, here. And we can use that to inherit from everything else and to go through and do simple things like drawing our graphics and stuff. Um, this is basically what handles the characters and everything. So what we are going to do now is we are actually going to make a full-on entity manager. So we already have the check collisions method. Um, this is actually going to be some pretty cool stuff we're going to do. Um, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll probably remember a good amount of it that we... Um, what game was it? It was the... Um, maze game that we had a full entity manager that could do some pretty cool stuff. So we're actually going to go through and do a similar thing. So the first thing we want to do is come into here and create another header file, header file that we're going to call entity. We need to make sure we can access entities. That's going to be class entity. is we are going to have what is known as a unordered map. So we need to actually come here and include this. This is a C++ uh, specific thing. And it's basically a hash table. I mean, long story short, it's a hash map. Um, it's going to basically be used to keep track of all the entities we have in the game and to assign them names. So what we have is we have uh, STD unordered map. And this is going to take a string, 
and then we are also going to want to have it give a pointity a uh, pointer to an entity. Ugh. Um, and this is just going to be called entities. This is basically just going to be our list of entities um, within the entity manager. So now that we have that, um, the next thing we're going to want to do is, um, in this case, we are actually going to want to have it be its own. Um, we don't want it to just be a header file. We, long story short, want it to actually have a CPD file. And you'll see more of why later. This is basically going to come down to how we're going to handle the collisions in this case. So we're going to come here and we're going to create a NT manager CPP file. I'm just going to include And we're going to do all our definitions in here, and then over in here we're going to actually uh, tell what everything does. So there's a couple big methods that we're going to need here. Um, the first thing, in order to even draw our entities, is we are going to want to have a, um, what should we call it? My mind is blinking. Um, the default instructor. And this is basically just going to go through and initialize some stuff for us. Um, we're going to want a add entity class. And we're just going to actually name that add because it should already be there. We're just going to give it an entity reference. And that will be basically how we add in an entity. Um, don't forget, though, that we also need the name of the entity, which is also important. And uh, that'll be it for right now. Now, the final thing we're going to want to add is a void update method, which is going to update all of our entities. We're probably going to want to also, um, actually that'll be fine. So we have that, and then we also want to do um, a render method, which is going to need, in this case, a render window in order to be able to render things. Um, basically, this is actually going to go through and loop through and draw all of the entities. So now what we're going to do is we are going to do entity manager, entity manager, and this is just going to uh, not really do anything specific because we don't need to do anything with the order unordered map there. And uh, we need our add method, which takes in a string and an entity pointer. And what we're going to do with this is we are going to um, come here and we are going to first go through and check whether or not the entity is already found. So within this we have our entities and we want to use the find method. And this is just going to look for uh, the name. Give that there. I did not. Whoops. Going to try and find a. Uh, oh, how do you use this again? So, we're going to come here because I can never remember how to use this. <sighs> and this is where the code is for the original entity manager, so if you want to come here and look at it, you're more than welcome to. Um, and right here you can see that this is how it's used. Um, basically there's an unordered map uh, constant array that we're going to use for this. So uh, it does just take name. I don't know why I thought it did something else. And then this is going to be found. And uh, what we're going to basically do is copy a lot of this, which is wall found does not equal this entities and then we want to basically have the name get added on uh, that and found is going to then be equal to that again. And then once uh, we don't find it, once we reach the end of the list, dot uh, insert 
and we need to do std make pair, and it's going to name an entity. There we go. So there is that all ready to go. Um, and what that's going to do is go through and add on the name. Now, in this case, we are actually going to want to add in this as a reference. Um, what this will do is, well, I'm trying to think because we're not always. Well, yeah, we're probably not going to want that to be a reference. That shouldn't matter too much. That is more for just keeping track of things and being able to individually identify them. Those are making interesting noises. Um, so there's that. And then we are going to want to come down here and do uh, void entity manager update. And that is going to be basically doing uh, this right here. So um, real quick before we continue on, uh, actually we'll go ahead and we'll just do this. We'll take it step by step. So for, and you'll notice that there's an auto and iterator is equal to oops, colon this entities. Um, and then what we can do is do iterator second update and void entity manager render which takes in a render window reference and we're going to do uh, for auto and iterator this entity window draw that we have our three main methods so let's kind of go through and talk about this real quick um, as we said before add basically we go through and we try and find a entity with that name already existing and if we find it if we don't reach the end of entities meaning that we found something then we're just gonna add on a zero onto the name um, you could change that really to anything as long as it's got something there um, it's kind of a cheap way to do it I am just kind of being lazy right now and then we go through and we try and find one with that name. And if it's found again, then it'll just keep adding on zeros until it's got a unique name. Once it has a unique name, it'll go through and it'll insert the name and an entity with that given name. Um, so basically this means that we'll never end up with an issue when we try and insert something of like the same name multiple times. Um, next up we have the auto which and iterator uh, colon this entities. This is basically a for each loop um, that'll go through the entities. It basically says that um, automatically go through and get the type of whatever this is. Uh, then we have and which makes sure that it's a reference to each object into here. So if we edit that object it won't, um, it'll actually take those changes. And then uh, iterator is just the name of it. And then the colon signus is basically a, you know, for each, and then uh, in entities. Um, so then we go through. And we have iterator dot, and we're getting the second argument, which in this case is the entity pointer. And so we do uh, dash greater than update. And uh, this is basically how we update everything in the game. And we do the exact same thing for the render method. And except in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use the window object to draw it. And uh, again, the entity uh, class inherits from the SF sprite, so we don't have to do anything special. We just dereference it uh, to get its actual value, and then we uh, draw that entity. So what this will let us do now is if we wanted to, we can come over to main game and we can add in, uh, we need to go up here and include the entity manager. So we're gonna include entity manager.h and what we're going to do is we are going to come here and we're just going to add an entity manager object. And so that's all situated. 
Um, the last thing we're going to want to do, well, clean up in a sec. So we have all of that. We come here, we do manager dot add, and we'll add it. I don't know a name. Um, And uh, test will be our entity. And we'll come here and we'll add in a quick test entity. Come here. Uh, I guess we can just go ahead and think about that. And test load. And we'll load. Uh, we have a test.png in there. Close that now. Sprites. Now we'll just load ball. And then we need to come here. We need to do uh, manager. So um, if not updated, if if we're not paused, then the manager should just update. We'll go through and make sure we can stay consistent with that. And then we do the same thing. We do it for render. Inserted in there, um, but I think this texture's maybe messing up. Yeah, it seems like the texture is getting messed up. Second sprite. Oh my goodness. I apologize. I am not 
plate, apparently. Oh, jeez. That was bad. So there's our ball right up there in the top left-hand corner, all situated and ready to go, because apparently I don't know how to do my file names very well today. <laughs> okay. Buzzing sound. Um, let's see here. All situated and ready to go, because apparently... Uh, it seems like the buzzing sound is gone from what I could hear. Um, it might be my speakers. Um, yeah, I turned those off, so maybe that'll help a little bit better. <sighs> okay, so we have our entity manager all ready to go. Um, the big thing we need to do now is we need to make sure we clean up everything when we're done. So, entity manager. And this is basically going to go through and clean up those. And yeah. So that'll make sure that those get cleared out. Um, and yeah. So now that we have that going, let's go through real quick and take a short break from that and work on our main menu. So real quick, I want to go through and just change around the game's name and stuff. Um, nothing too fancy. So we're going to change this from ping to invaded. We'll keep that as play and quit. And what we're going to do real quick is we are going to change the colors. So we're going to change it from green to red. Uh, make things a little bit more intense. Um, so if we come here and we open this up now have invaded and that means we can go through now and start focusing on playing this um, so we have that Just pause when we start up uh, we'll leave the main menu like that and now that we have that all set I'm gonna go ahead and upload things to the github page so initial creation added XML files added ping base added entity manager and updated main menu. So we'll go ahead and add that and synchronize it. So that's all there. You guys can go through and download the updated version of it now. Um, so what we're going to do now is come here and uh, start being able to actually add some more interesting properties. Ah, uh, yeah, th so the sound you're hearing is actually the fan in the background. Um, my heater and air conditioning is super, super loud. Um, let me just see. So, if it's super loud, I can go ahead and I can turn off my heat and I can uh, freeze a little bit. Okay, cool. So yeah, it doesn't sound like it's too bad then. Um, so I'm just going to let that keep running. That's so I don't freeze to death. Uh, temperatures here are very, very cold this, this past two days now. So, um, okay. So, we've got that cleaning up. So now let's go through and do some cooler stuff. So right now, when we want to destroy an entity, we actually have to uh, remove it from the list, which is kind of a pain at the moment, just because of how it all works. So what we are going to do now is we're going to make this a little nicer. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new section of protected. Um, basically, protected uh, things can not be accessed outside of it, except for classes that inherit it. So if we create a paddle object, or in this case, an emitter object, um, that inherits from entity, then we can access these variables in here. So this is going to actually just be a bool active. And actually, we're not even going to make it a bool in. We're going to make it an uh, integer. And this is basically just going to tell whether or not it's active and how active and such. Um, next up, we're going to give, add a method called active. And all this is going to do is return uh, the status of active. And uh, finally, what we're going to do is we are going to allow you to destroy the entity from outside of it. 
So we're going to have a void destroy. And this will set this dot act this active equal to zero. And by default, when a object is created, um, it should end up as active, which is just going to be one. So now that we have that, we can go through and we can get the status of whether or not they're active. So we're going to come over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a vector that basically goes through and removes entities as needed. So we're going to come here and we're going to also now include a vector. Um, so a vector is basically just an array list if you've ever used Java or C Sharp. Um, nothing too special. So we're going to have std vector to remove. And uh, this is going to store strings. And it's basically going to house a list of things we want to remove. So if iterator second Uh, and actually what we're going to do, we're going to do some really cool stuff now. So we're going to switch iterator second active. And this is basically going to be able to go through and switch um, what happens when something is active. So if it's zero, we actually want to go through and uh, insert the name of the object into our to remove list. Um, so we're just going to do that. back to why I'm putting this in here later, um, but basically different active statuses we'll be able to do different things with. Um, so we're going to handle that a little bit later, um, but for now we're just going to have it update like normal. And after it goes through and does that, we um, go through each iterator in the in to remove. And we basically go through and we um, go through this entities remove. Delete. What was it? Uh, erase. And it's basically going to remove the name. It And then finally, to remove will be cleared. And it will be deleted since we're going out of context there. And so basically, again, another for each loop. And we're basically going to just erase every entity with that name. And so this will only happen, however, if the object is no longer active. Um, and we don't really need to add anything here because once it gets deleted from the entities list, it won't be in here. So, now that we have that, let's go through and test that out. So what we're going to do is our entity, um, if the user if the user is playing a game and they press, let's go ahead and say, uh, what key do we want them to press? Let's go ahead and just say they press the A key. Actually, we'll make it the D key. Um, then we're just going to have the test object be destroyed. So we'll come here, and what you should see is you should see it uh, actually just be deleted. We press delete, D, and it doesn't. So let's go through and see what's going on exactly. Ah, so we aren't getting the key press. Ah, whoops, because I added it in the wrong section. Basically the game has to be paused. So we press enter, then we press D, and now that it gets there, it's going to go through and delete it. You can see now that it has changed that and updated that. So we'll just go through and add this down here instead of up there because I was failing. So come here, play, and then we do D. Oops, unpause D. 
then press D. And it deletes itself. So we basically have a way to go through and have objects be destroyed either by each other or by within themselves because we can just set it to be zero. So that allows us to do some pretty nice little things for uh, managing objects. And that's going to come in really handy once we actually start getting into the uh, meat of the game with things like bullets and stuff. We'll be able to have different types of bullets destroy different types of enemies and specific things like that. So, now that we have that all going, let's go through and do a few more quick little things um, just to kind of get ready for what's coming up. Um, so, the first thing we're going to need is collisions. So, big thing with collisions. This is still a pretty simple collisions game. Um, the big thing is that in Palm we had the ball colliding with the paddle. This time around what we're going to have is bullets colliding with different objects. Now, the big Space Invaders type clone I'm going to do is a basic one. There's not going to be uh, rocks or anything special like that that you can destroy. It's just going to be invaders on the top, uh, maybe a little special guy that flies around, and then you at the bottom shooting them. So, the way that this works, though, is that the invader bullets can't hurt each other, but they can hurt you. And your bullets can't hurt you, but they can hurt the invaders. Um, what this means is that we need to be able to detect different collisions for different objects and handle it, handle those collisions based on different things. With Pong, whatever the ball hit, it bounced off of. So we only needed really one collision handling method. But, you know, imagine if the ball hit player one and it did one thing and player two did another. That would mean that you need basically two collision methods. And in this case, we're probably going to need three or four for each object, depending on how many different types of things can happen with the bullets which means that we need to have an easy way to go through and check, okay, what object is it colliding with? What is it doing? So, um, I'm not sure how many people have heard of this, but in Java and other languages, there are these things called events and callbacks. Um, and we're basically going to be able to make a callback that will um, handle all the collisions for each object. Um, and Basically what it's going to do is that each object will be able to handle those in a different way. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into here and we have our check collision method already. Now what we're going to do is we're going to a uh, virtual void collide, uh, collision. And it's going to take in an entity and it's going to do nothing to start. But what we'll be able to do is coming through into our Entity Manager, we're going to have the ability to check collisions. So we're actually going to want to do this up in here with this. Um, so basically, if the, uh, the default case is where we're going to want to do this, we're going to want to go through uh, every object a second time around. This is going to be uh, really inefficient, but it'll get the job done. This entities, and what it's going to do is it's going to say if iterator second check collision with iterator two second, and so it's going to basically check for a collision, and it's pretty simple. Um, nothing too special there. The other thing that we're going to want to do though, and this will kind of help to prevent um, basically weird issues with things, is we're going to want to come here and we're going to want to say um, if iterator first uh, is there an equals it's not equal iterator two first. Basically uh, checking that they are different objects as well. And if they are, then iterator one is going to handle the collision. Um, so what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to do second collision with iterator two second. And finally, we want to break out of this loop because we no longer want to be going through each object. Um, is one well, we could do that, but that's actually going to cost too many issues, so we're not going to do that. Um, so we have all of that, and we're actually going to not want to do that there, but we're going to want to do it up here. Um, the reason for that is that um, if we deactivate, like let's say that we're doing bullet collisions and we check for a collision with the bullet and the player. Player gets shot, player should die instantly. 
but it's actually going to update the player one last time instead of automatically removing them, which is what we want. Um, the downside to this is that bullets can hit multiple things at once. So if you collide with two enemies at once, it's going to actually kill them both. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's a little jerry-rigged, but it, in this case, um, I'm going to leave it. It'll make things a lot easier. The easiest way to really fix that is to uh, break out of the loop the first time it hits something. Um, but there are probably going to be instances where we mostly want a bullet or whatever is colliding to have multiple effects, um, to do something with multiple objects at once. Um, so we're actually just going to leave that there. And what this is going to do is it's going to actually call the entity's collision method and pass through the entity. Now, the big thing to notice is that we're giving it the entity, but that doesn't mean we know what it is. Um, we could check a file name or something, but that's actually going to be really costly to go through and check a string every time. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something simple. We are just going to have a group ID. And this will allow us to give everything a category that it is in. So, you know, all enemies could be ID 1, all players could be ID 0, all bullets could be ID 4. Um, this allows us to not have to worry about giving, you know, worrying about the names all that much. And you'll really see where this comes into effect later. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave that like that. And we're going to set the group ID by default to be zero, meaning that there is no group. And we need a um, int get group, or an int group ID, which just returns group ID. And so now, with each entity, we'll be able to do things like uh, switch entity group ID. We'll be able to go through and do different things depending on the group ID. Um, and we'll go more into that later, but basically that's the big thing we're going to want. So we have all our collision stuff being handled, we have everything there going on. Um, we don't really have to worry about much more with this at the moment. Um, so I think we're ready to get started on the actual Space Invaders game now. Um, is that it? Add, ah, one more thing we're probably going to want. First, we're going to probably want to get an entity as well. Uh, so we'll give it that, and we'll be able to give it a name. This is going to be really more helpful for getting players than enemies, since players are going to have a unique name uh, more often than the enemies. So we have that. We'll come here. We'll do that. And just copy that. And return... Another thing with references actually is that um, references you can't actually make them null. So this is another reason why using uh, pointers in this case is a better idea as well. So we can do things like that. Um, so now we'll be able to go through and get the entity if it exists, and if not, it'll just return a null uh, pointer. So we want to make sure we handle that, of course. So there is all that. Um, the other thing we're probably going to want to do is make all of our entities micromanaging. So uh, what this means is that we don't ever want to be creating an entity outside of here. So we're going to want to make sure that when we are cleaning up, that we delete the uh, 
entities as well. That way we're freeing up memory. Um, and again, this is going to be the same thing that we'll want to do uh, here. Except in this case, go through here. There's a something I'm forgetting here. So what we're going to do is delete in this case. That. And if it does not equal that, then we delete that entity. And then we erase it as well. And in this case, it's going to be iterator first. find that, we do that, and then we erase it, and then we're done. So there is that. Um, anything else I'm forgetting? Should be all set. Cool. So now let's go ahead and get the uh, player going. So, Go through, add filter entities. Do the same thing here. Entities. And we're going to add in a new item, and this is just going to be our player. So we'll just name this ship. Hashtag pragmo. We have that. So the big things that we are going to want to override in this case are first off, the constructor is what we're going to want to override. So we're going to want to do a ship, and we will come here. We will do ship, ship, and this active is still going to be one. And then the group ID for the ship is going to be uh, one as well in this case. And um, the texture should still be created like normal. Um, and then finally, we want to load up the uh, image. Which in this case, it's going to be load, and then it's going to be ship.png. And we're actually just going to be kind of lazy for today and rename this to ship. Which means we need to come over here and get rid of our test entity. That is all set for there. Next up, we're going to want to override the update method. So we're going to come here. We're going to do void update. And again, we're going to just come here and uh, do void ship update. And remember that we also want to call the um, update method from here so that it will update the velocities. And then this velocity x is going to be equal to SF keyboard is key press SF keyboard key left right minus. And we're just going to take out that. And then going to subtract the left arrow, and that'll let us move it left and right. Um, so 
there's that. And then finally, what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to um, override the uh, collision class right here. So we have our void collision collision. We're going to do the same thing here. And we're just going to switch the uh, group ID of the other entity. So case is zero, that's what we set up for by default, and that'll just do nothing. Because no entity should ever have group ID of zero. So there's our collision method, our update method, and the actual ship. The final thing we're going to want to do is we're going to make sure that he is at the bottom of the screen, set position 2. Um, and we will want to make sure that we pass in, in this case, uh, the x and y coordinates for where he should start. Float x, float y, allow us to do different uh, starting positions. And again, x. So there's that. And we will come down here, ship, and uh, we need to make sure that we include that. And it's going to do new ship, and it's going to be window, hit position, x over plus uh, window, hit size, x2, and finally have window, hit position, oops, hit size. So that'll be the center of that, and then uh, Y, so he's at the bottom. And that should hopefully work out okay. Let's go ahead and give that a quick test run. So, big thing now is that he is starting out, uh, let's do this, show that better. Show you guys why that didn't work. And so you'll see now he's there. Um, basically, the reason that it didn't work before is that it was um, slightly off screen. So, what we're going to want to do is subtract. We're going to want to make sure that with the ship, that it is uh, going to the center, ship center. So, we're going to do x minus this. Get size, get global bounds dot width over two, and then do the same thing for the y, and that'll make sure that where we put it, it is centered. So, if we go and we do this, you'll notice that he is right down there, and we can move him and everything. Um, and if we pause, we can't move. And pause with him. So we have a simple little ship all ready to go. Um, and in this case, what we can even do is if we want to, we can just uh, put him all the way at the top. But I actually kind of like how he's uh, only half showing there, so I'm going to leave him like that. But if you wanted to have him be all the way up, you just remove the divided by two. So now that we have that, let's go through and we will add in. Uh, the keyboard controls for bullets. So we're going to do uh, is key pressed, SF keyboard key turn, or limit space, because that's probably better. And this is where he'll shoot stuff. So we're not going to worry about that right now. Um, I'll kind of go into more why we aren't worrying about that right now uh, later. But for right now, I don't want to worry too much about creating bullets and all of that. Um, we basically have to link that all together, and that's going to be a whole different ballgame. I just want to kind of get the basic entities going. Um, so here is all of that ready to go so far. Um, we can pause and unpause, and uh, as you can see, it's all ready to go. And we have our nice little ship. So uh, let's go ahead now and... 
let's go ahead now and make um, our enemy. So, as you can see here, right now, this is how, um, this is just for the ship. So, long story short, ships and enemies are actually going to be very, very similar outside of the group IDs and what affects them. So, we don't really have to do all that much to make it different. Um, we just have to change it to enemy dot h and come here and do the same thing down here. CPP. And then we're just going to copy this really and change this to enemy and do the same thing there. And we're going to do the same thing of all of that right there. And then just change that to enemy. Now the big thing is uh, enemies are going to be a group ID of two. And we're going to make the same thing, except we're just going to alter the color. Um, we're going to make it color red. And in this case, they do not need to be controlled by keyboards, so we don't need to worry about any of that. And, uh, yeah. So there is all that. Let's go through and add in a quick enemy just to test this all out. Um, so we're going to add him uh, this manager add enemy new enemy. And we need to make sure that we include the enemy uh, header file. And don't forget that we need the x and y. that Oops. and you'll notice that that guy is off screen again so we'll go ahead and just boost him over a little bit 32 32 make sure he shows up why aren't you showing up shift up png set this color I should do it okay, I guess so uh, let's make him let's see if that still does it. So okay. So let's make him blue. Hmm. I guess anything outside of that is going to be weird. So let's do this. Let's just go ahead then and edit this guy. And we will uh, change his color to white so we can uh, manually go through and do that. So come here, we select that, and we fill it with white. And we'll rename that to enemy. Actually, we will keep that as shit. We'll do something cool. So. Red, and then here, make it green. And now we are able to have multiple ships and stuff all settled and ready to go without having to do a whole lot more work um, with drawing. So, there's all of that. Let's go through and add in some basic movement. So the way that um, way that ship movement works in Space Invaders, at least for most of what I've seen, is that they um, they just basically move, stop, move, stop, move, stop. So we want to get that kind of sporadic look to them. Um, I'm actually going to go through and smooth it out, um, and it's actually going to be a pretty easy thing to do. Um, basically, we set the initial velocity because remember we're using velocities from everything. Uh, velocity dot x is equal to uh, let's say 0.75f, and what this is going to do basically, um, all of the invaders are hive minds um, enemies, so they all move in that same pattern. 
what this means is that we actually don't want it to be that. What we're going to want it to do is we're going to want to actually have a, um, effectively a global velocity that we use. And so what this is going to do is it is going to go through and we're going to have uh, all of the enemies affect each other. So long story short, we're going to have a float uh, direction is equal to 0 0.75f. And we're going to come here and we're going to use that for the velocity here. And this is actually going to be updated every time. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to specify uh, the edge enemy. We're going to specify that every enemy is able to go through and do this, um, which is basically they're going to be able to detect whether or not they are at an edge. And so the way that this will work is that we are going to want to have it so that um, if this uh, we could just copy that. Get position dot x is greater than, um, and in this case, we're going to want to make sure that we use the proper screen width. So we're actually going to want to update the update method to be able to get the window size. So we're going to come here. We're going to make sure that all entities can do that. So avoid update there and there. There, and there, and then pass in the window there, and there. And so now what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to say window dot get size dot x. And we'll want to make sure that we add on the width of this character as well. Get size. So basically, if uh, he is on the edge, then this, then the direction, which is our global variable, should times equal negative one. And this is also going to happen if the x is less than zero. Is less than or equal to zero, or that. We'll do greater than or equal to that. So what's going to happen is um, we're going to update that. We're going to check the position, and then um, if they are over the edge, we're going to change the direction, and then we're going to move him back to where he was previously. And then um, we're actually going to go through this is going to do is it's going to check the direction and we're going to update it. If he is off screen the direction is going to be multiplied by negative one and then the velocity will be set to the direction again and then we're going to move the enemy back to where he started and then we're going to move him over one and all of the subsequent enemies will do the, should do the exact same thing. Um, so let's go ahead and just test it with this one guy. Where's our error? Ah, right there. So we need to pass in the window here. Window, window. And we're going to need to do, go to the update declaration here and do the same thing. We're going to need to go to main game. We're going to need to pass that in. We're still going to get errors. Ah, whoops. That needs to be an extra. And we'll do that. And, uh, and 
and so what will happen is he is just going to kind of float back and forth between that. Now this of course works okay, but the big problem is going to be that he should be moving down. So before we do that, let's go through and add in a second enemy that is going to be uh, just slightly off to the side. So, plus another 32. And they're just going to sit next to each other, and they're going to be able to move together. So they are kind of like linked there. Um, we can add in, you know, 64 to make it a little bit more spacing and make it more noticeable that they're not just bouncing off of each other. And so all enemies are going to follow this uh, pattern, all the basic enemies. Um, and so what we are going to do now is we're going to have them move down just ever so slightly when that happens. Um, so then we want to do this. think of the best way to go through and do this. So, what we're going to want to do is velocity x does not equal direction, then this move 0 and we'll say 32. And this will happen the same thing here. And then what we will see is when they are not, when they hit that, they will move down by 32. And uh, that means we need that guy to do the same thing. And that is because we did that wrong. There we go. So, now when we do that, they will move down, and they will gradually go down further and further, and then what we can do is we can go through and have it so that when they clock with the um, player, they destroy him. So, go to ship, and if we run into an enemy, enemies have a group ID 2, so we'll do case 2. Uh, this destroy. So come here. And we will just wait for them. Let's go ahead and speed this up though. And speed them up to let's say three. So make them move nice and fast. Uh, that'll let us get a easy testing environment. Go ahead and give that a second. Uh -oh. and their offsets do not seem to be working and but they did play destroy the player like we wanted so let's go through and figure out why the enemies are doing that um, basically that is going to be because of the fact that he is not offset perfectly um, so basically what we want to do is we want to come here and we'll want to, uh, what is the size of this? I think it's 32 by 32. Yeah. So we want to make this 16 and 16. And then if we come here, they should be perfectly offset from each other. And we can go through and speed them up again to do that. Speed it up even further to make testing better. And the reason for that is uh, actually, now I know why, because their velocities are, yeah, that makes sense. We update that. Oh, that should have worked actually.
because the leftmost enemy is not moving. Um, so basically we want to have them all have an offset. So that makes sense why that's happening now. Um, This is one of the classic problems with space invaders that I always forget about. Um, basically what's going on is uh, the first enemy moves to the left, and then the second guy just not... Uh, they basically keep moving closer and closer. Um, and the best way to fix that is probably going to be to not move them until after, but then that is going to mess up that. So, what is going to be the best way to handle this? I apologize, I should have planned that out more beforehand. Um, Think of some clever solution on how to fix this rather than Jerry rigging it together. Yeah. Go through and they hit one side, and then the rest of them have to be reset to do so. Um. This is going to look pretty weird, but it should, in theory, work. Sorry, I'm thinking about the best way to do it. I was originally thinking that I could have them bounce off of each other, but then when they move down, they'll move down sporadically. Um, so for right now, we're just going to kind of leave that the way it is. They'll gradually get closer to each other, but it shouldn't be as bad since they won't be moving as fast. Um, so go through and bring that over, and you guys can see how that looks as it goes through. Um, and then what we will want to do now so while that goes through and test, we're going to go through and focus on what to do next, which is probably going to be the bullets. Um, so we're going to come here, we're going to add in a uh, new item. Bullet. And then do the same thing here. Add that. see that they're not getting too close together um, definitely not you know they definitely are getting closer together but it's not going to be as noticeable so for bullets what we are going to want to do is we're going to include again the entity class Oops. and uh, do class bullet and that's going to again extend the entity class and actually a lot of this again can just be uh, copied from ship because it's going to be a very similar one again that 
this collides with something um, that is not another bullet. So the bullet IDs is going to be three, and uh, if it's three, it's going to do that. Otherwise, it will do uh, destroy itself. And what this is going to do is we're actually going to There's that, and what we're going to do is make this color white, and then we're going to scale this. Set scale to 0.5f, 0.5f, and the width is going to need to be smaller than the height. And when we set the position, it's going to do that, and the velocity will be dependent on what we want. So float uh, direction. And what this is going to actually be is we're going to give it an angle. Well, do we need to give it an angle? I guess we can just do it up down, make things easy. So that is going to be a direction. Velocity y is going to be the direction we give. Um, and it's going to constantly update itself. So we have that, and finally, is there anything else that we need? X, Y direction, and okay, cool. Cool. So the last thing that we're going to want to do is we are going to want to um, take that here, and So basically in the update man method, we want to be able to create uh, new entities. So we're going to want to be able to include that. And this is going to need to be included into ship. boundaries similar to this except with the y. So y where's that? Let me destroy it. And coming over here. Ah, 
because we're including them in each other. Ah, that's right. Now this is what I was talking about with things getting a little bit more hectic when you start including files into each other. Um, what this basically means is that in our core, we're going to have to come here and add in a entity CPV file. And we have to go through and clean this up a little bit now. Bring all of those into here. unfortunately because of that
not instantly destroyed. Minus 32. Put it in front of the player. And you can see that we can go ahead and create our bullets. Now the one thing to notice is that there are a lot of bullets created all at once. So we're going to want to come here to ship, have a bull space, and this is going to just be the space bar key. by default will be false. And if not that and that, and that'll help to limit how many bullets we're keeping track of in our game. And you can see that the bullets destroy themselves, but they do not destroy the ships. So what we want to do is we want to come down here, and we want to have case 3, break, and this destroy. And so now if we go through and we do this, you can see that the bullets destroy each other. Or that the bullets are destroyed by these ships. So we can now destroy them. The final thing we're going to want to do is add in the score object. Um, that way we can keep track of the score. And this is actually going to be included uh, here. Um, because when an enemy is destroyed, it is what should keep track of the score change. So we're going to do that. And every enemy created needs to have the score object with it. So, go there. And again, this. And finally, if it is destroyed, add increase score. And we come here. Now we come here, and we destroy an enemy. Ooh. It will be able to do that. So, now that we have that, let's see why those didn't destroy after. this a little bit. Oh, seems to be working now. So we have that all set to go. Um, there's a little bit of a bug with the, uh, the characters, but that is not a huge deal. Um, the big thing we're going to want to do real quick is we're going to want to change that to be a pointer. And then to come into here, let's see for the new entity manager, and then take out that, that and that, that and that. And then come down 
here, that in there, that in there, and finally delete this manager. Make sure we don't need to delete anything else right now. Nope. So we do need to delete this paused. Last one, and that is all working now. So we have all of our entities ready to go. Um, the next step of what we will want to do oh, is now that we have our basic enemies there, we're going to want to create a small grid of them, and we're also going to want to make sure that the enemies can shoot. Um, so in Space Invaders, the enemies can shoot back. Um, the other thing is that when the enemies collide with here, we should actually reset the game as well. So we need to also handle uh, game overs and all of that. So let's go through real quick and um, let's get these guys going. So enemies um, shouldn't be able to do a whole lot of bullets, so we're going to do ammo int or x turn int ammo. Um, this is basically going to give me how many shots the enemies can fire on the screen at a single time. So again, we're going to have uh, in ammo, we'll say a max of five bullets. Um, and every time they fire, it will be handled in here. So we're going to get a random number between um, a chance is equal to random mod 0 and 100, so 0 to 99, and if chance is greater than, I think we want it to be greater than 75%, um, or yeah, 25% chance. So it has, um, basically, um, the way that this is works is we generate a number between 1 and 100, and then between 1 and 100, and then if the number is greater than 75, aka that there is a 25% chance of this actually happening, um, then we want to fire the bullet. So, and so what this means is that when it shoots, the ammo should be, uh, have one subtracted from it. So, real quick, I have a message. Um, so we want to then subtract from the ammo, and uh, when that happens, <laughs> thanks for joining the lag script. So uh, when this goes on, what we want to do is we want to subtract one from there, um, and we'll fire the bullet. So we'll come here, and we will make sure that we have our empty manager in there. So we're just going to kind of copy paste this there to there. And here. Make sure that we include and then time around the bullets are going the opposite way. And we want to come here and include bullet. And the other thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set the bullet ID to be um, enemy bullets. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to be have a type. And this is just going to be a number. Uh, um, actually we'll make it a boolean good. And what that'll do is it'll signify whether it is a good guy bullet or a bad guy bullet. So, if good, then this group ID is equal to 3, 
and otherwise it will be equal to 4. And if it is 4, then that means it can uh, destroy our ship. And so that's going to be the same thing there. So we have that. And finally, we will want to have another uh, X turn ammo here. So this guy can see it. And if the group ID is 4, then ammo should plus equal 1 after it's been destroyed. Um, and the reason for that is we want to make sure they get their ammo back. Case 3 and case 4. Uh, not be able to do anything special. And there we go. And then, if ammo is greater than zero, then we have a chance of fire. There's an error somewhere. Oh, and we need to add in the good bad. So we have this is bad. Here, and then this is true. Oops. So thank you for following. Um, I'll try and give shout outs to those who start following and stuff if I can remember to check my email every now and then. Maybe I'll add some kind of a bar onto that. Um, and in that case, two is what will not destroy it. And again, we're running into that same issue. So if it's four, then the enemy should be able to destroy it. Oops, and that would be because I put this in the wrong section. be destroyed by a bullet and that all works and we 
could of course come through and destroy them. Scratch might just be a bug after we play. So let's double check that. Nope, we accidentally made them indestructible. So let's go ahead and fix that. So if it is a bullet, then they should be destroyed and they should have that incremented. So let's see if good, then create a good guy bullet. Okay. So, why aren't they being destroyed? Let's go find out. And so that should be working. Let's double check now. Maybe it was just a fluke. Yep, seems to have just been a fluke. There we go. So the code before was just a little messed up. Now you'll notice that he is still shooting quite a bit, so what we're going to do is we are going to uh, make sure that we lower that a little bit more. We'll give him, um, let's give them like a 1% chance of even hitting. So let's go through and say, uh, what we can do is we can actually do less than to make this more readable. So we'll give them a 5% chance of being able to do that. That's still quite high, so let's give it a 2%. And that's still pretty high. Um, shouldn't actually ever happen now. Yeah, see now, it can never fire. So what we're going to do is um, we are going to have a delay of how many, um, we're going to have a delay of how many times they retry and things like that. Um, for now though, I'm just going to keep it like that. Um, and what we're also going to do real quick is we're going to add ammo to the uh, good guy. And the way that we can do that, let's see here. Um, we'll just leave that alone. So, there's our basic game so far. Let's go through now and add in a grid view to it. So we'll do two, zero, eyes less than, let's say, ten enemies at the top. Change that to Y, Y, and Y plus equals one. Zero x is less than. Uh, we'll go with five x. And then That'll go through and add in a whole bunch of enemies for us to use. Let's see how that looks. And those are really close together. So, go ahead and make that separated by 32. And that's a little bit better, but I still don't quite like that. And that should actually be 5, and that should be 10. And we'll make it, uh, let's go ahead and say uh, 48 and 48. And now we have them all nice and uh, looped around. Now you'll notice that the game's running a little slow, so what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to remove this seat 
which should hopefully uh, speed things up just a tiny bit. So now that's looking at a more normal speed. Um, the big thing that's causing a lot of this actually is the um, make it a little faster. At least they appear to. Um, they're not really getting well. I guess they are. Yeah. So you can see that they get a little faster as the game speeds up. Um, that is because of the uh, fact that we removed sleep. Um, so that's kind of a neat little trick on how to get it to uh, look like it's speeding up as you kill the enemies without actually doing it. I actually kind of wonder how much, uh, how similar that is to the original Space Invaders. Um, whether they actually like did something like that. Um, here to so where is our entity manager okay so the reason for that is that it is going through and checking collisions for every single object um this basically is not entirely what we want it to do um, there's actually some nice little speed improvements we can do. Um, specifically, we can go through and we can have certain objects, um, we can only handle collisions. So, as a good example, we don't need to check the collisions of every enemy. Um, really, all we care about are, um, well, first off, what we can do is we can do this. Then we want to destroy the entity. And then we can come over to the ship, and we can do the exact same thing for that. And now with bullet, we don't actually need to go through and um, do any of that. Um, basically, because we're already checking on that, we can go through and we can have our external int ammo there and there, and we can do this. And the ammo should be given back uh, there. And then we don't even need to worry about a collision method for bullets anymore, which is an entire thing that we can now take out. However, um, that's actually going to slow down the game a whole bunch because now we're checking it with all the enemies. Um, so as we destroy enemies, it will speed up. We don't really want to have that kind of a lag, increase, decrease type thing going on. So what we actually want to do is we actually want to do all of that within there. Um, so what this means is that we need to modify this code a little bit. So first things first, enemy no longer should have score. Um, bullet should have score. So we're going to come here, and we will have a um, score score. And we need to come here, and we need to include score here. And then we're going to have a new constructor that will be able to take in the score. Because um, we want one that has the score and one that does not. Because there are going to be instances where the score does not matter. Um, so in this new one, what we do is we just copy this. And we take in the score from there. This score is the score. And finally, and this is that. <sighs> so, uh, if this ID is three, 